And you know this morning, no matter who you are, no matter where you are in life or what's going on or what's happening in your life, I'm glad you're here today. You know why? Because I believe that God wants to do huge things in your life. You know that God has a great purpose and a great plan for each one of us. And everyone here in this room today is capable of doing something great in their life. God has great things for us. Amen? I'm so excited about the Life Group series that we're going to start through the eyes of a lion. It's really all about how you see your life. What you choose to fix your eyes on, what you choose to look at, what you choose to see with your eyes. Amen? And the book really recounts the story of how God brought Levi and his family through the most difficult days of their life. And how they didn't just survive, they didn't just kind of make it through the crushing grief, but they actually used that grief and that sorrow and that pain as a platform for the greater things that God had for them in their lives, in their personal lives, and in their family. Amen? And the principles that he shares in his book, they're truly life-transforming. Especially when we're dealing with circumstances that can be overwhelming. And you know, it isn't just the death of a loved one that overwhelms us. All kinds of things can overwhelm us. It can be the comment of that person coming the other direction in the hallway at school. And just a few words that they say can crush you and overwhelm you. Isn't that right? It could be the loss of a job. It could be the loss of finances. It could be the death of a loved one. It could be the loss of a dream. Something that you've hoped and believed and dreamed for and you see it kind of dying before your eyes. It could be the loss of your health. Or it could be the pain of divorce. There are all kinds of challenges and difficulties and circumstances that we face in life. And the huge things that God wants to do in our lives always lie on the other side of great trials. In order to get to the greatness that God has for you, you've got to face some pain. You've got to face some difficulty. You've got to face some hardship and learn how to go above and beyond. Amen? There is incredible power that comes from facing impossible pain. And if you'll learn to walk through that with the eyes of a lion, changing your perspective, getting an eternal perspective on your life can change everything. So often we see our lives through temporary eyes. We see what's happening right in front of us. We see the things that are going on surrounding us. And we don't see the eternal perspective of God. We don't see the eternal perspective of our lives. And we need to see our lives, our circumstances, our situation, even our pain through the eyes of a lion. The question is not if you're going to go through something brutal like the loss of a loved one. The question really is when. You might be sitting here this morning thinking, well, okay, I get that, that whole thing about pain and suffering, and that's good for people who are going through pain and suffering, but my life is good. You know, I'm just kind of sailing along. I'm just kind of floating through life, and you know, nothing really bad is happening in my life. But you know what? You cannot escape the pain that happens in this world. It will come to you. Have you ever thought about this? You and everyone that you know is going to die sometime. It's not a question of if, it's just a question of when. And the pain of loss will come to your life. Suffering and grieving are powerful things. And I would say this, outside of drugs and alcohol, there probably isn't anything that has a more profound effect on your emotions, on your feelings, on your mental state. Even physically, grief and pain can simply take over your life. It can make your brain hot and your hands clammy and your stomach sink, your mind race and your skin itch and your blood boil all at the same time. And there isn't anything you can really do to stop it. The waves of pain, they just come against you. And you need to develop a faith that can sustain you. It's so easy to look at people in fair weather and think, wow, they've got such great faith because look how great everything is going in their life. But you know, when you know someone's faith is real is when it's tested by the fire of pain when it's tested by suffering, when it's tested by grief. And you know, difficult, dark days will certainly come. And you need faith that can sustain you through that time. You need to be able to see with an eternal perspective beyond what is right in front of you. Today's message is called Hidden in Plain Sight. You realize there are things around us all the time that we can't see, but it doesn't change the fact that they're there. So often we look at the circumstances and the situation in our life and we think that's all that there is. 
And we think we understand what's going on. And we think we know what all the possible outcomes are of the circumstances we're in. But we don't know. We don't see everything. We don't always see what's really there right in front of us. If you went outside today, the clouds parted for a few moments and we could see the blue sky and you looked up into that blue sky, what would you see? Blue sky. But you know that you're actually looking at millions upon millions of stars? The fact that you can't see them doesn't change the fact that they're there. Even on the clearest night, you go outside in the, in the darkest place on planet Earth, lie on your back and look at the heavens, you're seeing a fraction of what is really there. And you know, it's like that in our lives spiritually. We don't always see what's really happening. In 2011, the FBI entered their most extensive manhunt in the Bureau's history. In the whole history of the FBI, this was the biggest manhunt they'd ever been on. They captured a former mob boss named Whitley Bulger from Boston. They've been chasing this guy for 16 years they've been after him. Imagine that. 16 years they're looking for this guy named Whitey. And when they find him, what do you think he's doing? Hiding out in some compound in the mountains like Osama bin Laden was? Living underground somewhere? Holed up in a safe house hiding from people? Living down in South America? Hiding in some obscure community? No! You know what Whitey Bulger was doing when they found him? He was shopping. Exactly. You know the story. <laughs> he was living in an apartment three blocks from the beach in Santa Monica. He was living the life. People looked at him and his wife every day and they just didn't know what they were seeing when they looked at him. He was this nice man retired with his wife who liked to take in stray cats and take care of them. He went down the 3rd Street promenade every day and shopped and had coffee in the cafes. They had no idea that this guy had $800,000 in cash stashed in the walls of his apartment. They had no idea that he had an arsenal of guns and grenades stockpiled in his apartment. They had no idea that this neighbor and his wife, who just looked like a retired couple taking care of stray cats, was actually wanted for 19 murders. They had no idea that this man that they saw walking down the street every day was the second most wanted man in America behind bin Laden. Here he is sipping coffee hidden in plain sight. People saw him, but they didn't know what they were looking at. And here's the point. We see circumstances in our life and we think we know what we're looking at. We think when we see that bank balance, we know what we're looking at. We think when we hear the doctor's report and see the report, we know what we're looking at. We think when our marriage is falling apart and our kids are going out of control and everything is crashing around us, we think we know what we're looking at. But quite often, looks can be deceiving. And that's point number one. Looks can be deceiving. Things are not always as they appear. And the promises and blessings of God are often like the stars. They're still there. You just can't see them right now. It might appear that it's over. It might appear that you've lost your job. Your relationship is done. Your kids don't love you. The doctor says you're going to die. Things might not always be as they seem though. Things can seem overwhelming. It can seem like everything's against you. But faith doesn't look at what it can see. It looks past. It looks beyond. It looks further. It sees things you can't see with the naked eye. It's called faith. 2 Corinthians 4.18 The Apostle Paul wrote these words almost 2,000 years ago. He said, So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. How often do we go through our life just focused on the troubles right in front of us? The problem with my business. The problem with my job. The problem with my husband. The problem with my life, wife. The problem with my kids. And all we see is the troubles that we can see. But he says we don't look at those things that we can see now. Rather, we fix, fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. There are two things we can learn from this verse. What we can see with the naked eye is only part of the story. You're only seeing part of the story with your naked eye. 
And number two, there are things right in front of us all the time that we can't see. You know that's true when it comes to our physical vision? Here's a little lesson from biology. What we call sight is actually light passing through the cornea into the pupil where it's focused by a lens onto the retina. You guys all know about this, right? The tissue at the back of the eye is the retina, and it's covered by photoreceptors called rods and cones. Does anybody know about rods and cones? You guys have rods? My girls know because they're in biology right now. Rods process shapes. But guess what? They're colorblind. They work well in low light. When you go into your closet and you don't turn on the light because you don't want to wake up your spouse and you're in there searching for your clothes, you can't see the color. The rods are giving you the shape, but the cones aren't working in the low light. They don't process color in low light. The cones are great for seeing color and making out finer detail, but they require more light. So the other day, I went into my closet, and I didn't turn on the light in the closet. I had the light on in the bedroom behind me, and I'm in the closet picking out my clothes, and I picked out my black dress pants. Then I picked out a shirt and a tie to go with my black dress pants. And I got myself dressed, and I went out from the room, and when I leave my room, I enter chaos in my house. You know what I'm talking about? All these kids to get ready and all going in different directions. And, and from that point on, I don't really notice a lot other than just getting everything done. I get in my car, I drive to my office, and later on I'm in my office and I'm, I'm getting my coffee in the coffee room and I look down and I'm like, hey, my pants are blue. Now they look black in my closet. I swear I put on the black pants in my closet. And I got to my office and my pants were blue. The thing was I had a shirt and tie that went with black. And now I was stuck at my... It's too far to drive home from my office. I was stuck in my office with blue pants on. Things are not always as they appear. I could have swore I was wearing my black pants. Now the thing is, in my closet, looking at those pants, the color was still there but I couldn't see it. And I took the wrong pants. The retina sends the info to the brain via the optic nerve to be interpreted by the brain to understand what you're seeing. But here's the interesting thing. When God designed your eyeball, He put all the rods and cones in the retina and the little nerves from the rods and cones all travel to the same point at the back of your eye and there's a little mass of them it ain't that big. And it connects to the optic nerve all in that one spot of your retina. Guess what happens in that little spot of your eye? There are no photoreceptors there. So when the vision comes in through your lens and goes to the back of your retina, there's a little spot in the back of your eye where you can't see anything. Can anybody right now see their blind spot? Just looking out, can you tell me where that blind spot is? Why can't you see that blind spot? There's a blind spot. You all have a blind spot in each eye. There's a little hole, there's a little spot in each eyeball at the back of your eye where all the nerves leave, and there's no photoreceptors there. Well, guess what your brain does? Your brain fills in the blanks, adds the missing information, connects all the lines, fills in the colors, and all day long you're looking around at everything you can see, not knowing that your brain is filling in the blind spot the whole time. If you want to experiment with this later, get a piece of paper, put two black circles like that, close one eye. You have four inches, eight inches, depends on how long your arms are. Look at one circle and pull the paper away. Now if it's lined paper, when you get to the right distance, the dot will disappear and a line will form. The lined paper, it'll just fill in the line for you. And you'll be looking at that paper going, Holy smokes, the thought just disappeared. That's your blind spot. Guess what? We've all got spiritual blind spots. Did you know you've got a blind spot on your soul? It's true. You've got a spiritual blind spot. Why? Why do we all have a spiritual blind spot? I believe it's what happened in the Garden of Eden when God spoke to Adam and Eve and said, Do not eat from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And Satan comes to Eve and he says these words. Here it is on the screen right here. 
He says, you won't die. <sighs> Come on. God's just keeping the good stuff from you. You're not going to die. The serpent said to the woman, God knows your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it. And you'll be like God, knowing both good and evil. Now a lot of times we read the Scripture and, and, and we've kind of processed the story of creation and sin entering the world and man falling and, and man's eyes being open to good and evil and we go, yeah, that's what happened. Satan was right. They didn't die. Their eyes were opened. But you know, Satan, if he's anything, he's a liar. And this is how he likes to deceive. He uses just enough truth to confuse you. Just enough truth to mislead you to the wrong conclusion. Because the reality is, we didn't get our eyes open. We got a blind spot. Yes, our eyes were open to good and evil. But you know what else? We got a botched LASIK surgery on our soul. <laughs> That's what happened. Our eyes were open to see things we never should have seen. God never intended us for us to see rape or for us to see incest or for us to see murder or for us to live with the weight of sin or guilt or death. These things were never meant for our eyes. And yet we see these things all the time in our lives. You know, before that time, Adam and Eve walked with God face to face. But you know what? We haven't seen God since. And there are a lot of people today who that blind spot in their soul, they would say, well, I don't even know if there is a God. I'm not sure. Why are people not sure? Because there's a blind spot. God is there. We just can't see Him. Consequently, we walk around through our lives looking only at the physical realm, the things we can see with these physical eyes. We focus on our little smartphones with Instagram and Facebook and drinking lattes and texting and sending tweets and watching movies. We're, we're sitting on our phone now. We don't even have to go to the movie theater. I can just go to Starbucks all myself, all by, sit down, have my latte and watch a movie. And then I can get up and go home. I can sit down on the couch next to my wife. And I can tweet and text and Facebook. And then I can get up and I can go sit in my bed while I'm getting tired and go to sleep. And pull. Who lives that way? Now come on, you guys. Fess up. I know I'm not the only one. Looking at all these things down here and missing the spiritual things that exist. And I'm here to tell you something today. What exists in the spiritual realm is more real than what we can see with these eyes. It's true. We are oblivious to things happening around us all the time. Point number two. Eternity becomes visible by faith. It's through the eyes of faith that we begin to see eternal things. Faith is like a telescope that allows us to th see things that we can't see with our naked eye. Now we lie on our back and look at the stars and gaze and we can count four to 5,000 stars in the heavens. But if we get a telescope, we can count millions of stars. And if we get outside of the Earth's atmosphere with an even greater telescope, we can see even multiplied more millions of stars. And it's kind of like that in our lives spiritually. Faith is the telescope that allows us to see beyond what the naked eye can perceive. Words from the Apostle Paul in his book that he wrote to the Corinthians. He said, we walk by faith. Not by sight. What did he mean by that? We walk by faith, not by sight. Faith gives night vision to your soul. Faith lets you see in the dark. Faith changes everything. When you see people through the eyes of faith, you don't see people with problems. You don't see people with hang-ups. You don't see people with mistakes and failures. You see people with potential that God has placed inside of their lives. You see people differently. Every single person has a calling on their life. Everyone. Every person was created by God for a purpose. Everyone is destined for impact. To quote Loki, the brother of Thor. I know you didn't think you'd hear that in church, but here you are. Loki, the brother of Thor, said this. He said, I am burdened with glorious purpose. You know, when you begin to see your life through the eyes of faith, when you begin to see others through the eyes of faith, when you begin to see what God sees when He looks at you, you don't see what's in the physical, natural realm. You don't see what only the naked eye can see. You see that we are all burdened with glorious purpose. 
When you see pain, when you look at pain, you see that it's not without purpose. As bad as it is, God will work it for good. When you look at your problems, when you see your mistakes, when you see your failures, when you see the pain of what's happening around you in your life, you remember God has a plan for your life. You remember that whatever it is that has got you surrounded, that you think there's no way out, guess what? It is surrounded by God. That's faith. It's not being in denial about what you're dealing with. It's knowing that the same God Adam used to walk with in the garden is right there beside you. And no matter what happens, He'll be your God to the end. Number three, nearsightedness must constantly be corrected. Now, I I have a different problem. I have these things. Yeah, the other day, my wife sent me a phone number for someone. Then she sent me another phone number for somebody else, but I wasn't wearing these. (laughs) So I pulled out my phone, and I couldn't even tell that there were two text messages there, and I clicked on the second phone number for the first person (laughs) and left a message. And I had no idea that I had done the wrong thing because nearsightedness must constantly be corrected. You guys want to see what I'm looking at when I look at my notes? Without my glasses. That's what I'm looking at, guys, right there. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. With That's how come I don't have my glasses on. You know what one of the great things about glasses is, though? When you're wearing glasses and you want to make a point, you can just take your glasses off. And it's so elegant. It's so smart. You, you just take your glasses off and you make the point, right? People with contacts, on the other hand, they have an entirely different problem. Let me just make that point. Now, let me tell you, it's just not the same, is it? Nearsightedness, oh, that's what it says. Nearsightedness must constantly be corrected. And that's our problem, spiritual nearsightedness. We've got to constantly be correcting the nearsightedness. The thing about lions is lions are farsighted. They have incredible vision at great distances. They can see super far away, super good. But you know what? We can hardly see past next Tuesday. You know what I'm talking about? We see things here on earth right in front of us, but heaven seems blurry. God seems out in the distance. It's so hard to see the spiritual things. They seem so far away. God isn't so easy to see. We're nearsighted and we have a spiritual blind spot. But faith corrects the blind spots. So we must constantly make the choice not to rely on the naked eye, but to live by faith. To trust in God. To believe in Him. To see with spiritual eyes the things that we can't see with our naked eyes. Just as a nearsighted person puts glasses on each day, we've got to do something to correct our spiritual vision. Now how do we do that? How do we correct our spiritual vision every day, especially when we're facing great pain or facing great difficulty? The answer for our eyes is actually right here in our ears. Did you know that you correct your spiritual vision by what you hear? Romans 10.17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If we don't hear what God says, we won't see what God sees. If we don't hear what He says, we won't see what He sees. So we've got to always be in the Word of God correcting our sight, correcting our vision. All of life, really, is a war of lenses. It's how you choose to see your life. Will we believe what we see or we will, will we believe what God says is there? Number four, Seeing the invisible, you can do the impossible. If we only look at what we can see with the naked eye, guess what? We'll lose heart. Because life is tough. Life just hurts sometimes. Anybody here been sucker punched by life this week? Me, every day, just about practically. Any of you be in sales, you get sucker punched all the time. You think you're just on the verge of a great, big, great, wonderful deal and wham! You lose two more deals somewhere else. I mean, my goodness. Life does that. 
But when you let God give you vision that is supernatural, you'll be able to receive strength that's superhuman. That's why those in the Hebrews Hall of Faith, this is a little section of Scripture in the book of Hebrews where the writer begins to list all the great people of old and the amazing things that they accomplished with their lives. We call it the Hall of Faith. Those in the hall of faith who can see the invisible through eyes of faith do the impossible. Let's have a little read from just a portion of that passage. Hebrews 11, verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, and turned to flight The armies of aliens. How did they do it? They did it through faith. Faith taps you into power from on high. Peace that passes understanding and joy that's unspeakable. In your most difficult moments, through the telescope of faith, you see that you're not alone. God is with you. And the more your eyes are set on the things above, the more power you have to run this race with faith and endurance. Today we learn that seeing the invisible, you can do the impossible. Nearsightedness must always be corrected. Eternity becomes visible by faith and looks can be deceiving. Or we could just flip that around and we could put it this way. We need to look at life through the right lens. Let's look at that. Number one, L. Looks can be deceiving. Things are not always what they appear. You might think it's the end, And it may just be the beginning of the greatest thing you've ever imagined. E. Eternity becomes visible by faith. N. Nearsightedness must constantly be corrected. And S. Seeing the invisible, you can do the impossible. Now, just leave that up there. You can leave that up while I finish. Because of Jesus, the King of Kings, we can all have our eyes opened. You know, the solution for what we lost in the garden, we lost our ability to see spiritually. The solution for what we lost in the garden is what happened in another garden. We lost it in the Garden of Eden, but there's the garden tomb where Jesus was laid to rest. You might feel that you're all alone today, But I have news for you. You're not alone. Jesus is with you. And He loves you. And if you'll open your heart to Him, He'll open your eyes. It takes us taking a step of faith first to trust in Him. And when we take that step to trust in Him, He begins to open our eyes and we begin to see things that we couldn't see before. There's no way to know when death will call. As Levi shared the story of his daughter four days before Christmas, they had no idea that death would come calling on their door that day. They had no idea what was about to happen. And you know, in our lives, it's the same. We don't know when death will come for us. None of us knows the day or the hour. Death seldom calls ahead. We don't know when death will come, but I can tell you this. You can be ready for that day in your life. You can be ready when death comes to you. The Bible says Jesus came to die for us, and He rose so that when we die, we can also rise with Him. There's nothing better that you can do in your life to turn off the dark than to let Jesus turn on the light in your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank You, God, that You created us in Your image. You created us in Your likeness. And God, You created us to know You. And Lord, there may be some people who say that it's not possible to know whether God exists, that maybe God makes sense, that God is a good idea, but we can't really know Him. But God, I believe that as we open our hearts to You through Jesus Christ, that You open up our eyes spiritually that we can see things we never saw before. And I know, God, that day in my life when you opened my eyes as a young man walking down a mountain road gazing at the stars and saying, is there really a God? 
Do you really exist? Because i got to know. I have to know before I can go out into the world and out into my life. I've got to know. And that night, God, You opened my eyes and I saw You like I never had before. And God, I know that You'll do that over and over and over again as we open our heart to You through Christ. And I ask that Your Holy Spirit would be here now. God, that You would begin to tug and to pull on the hearts of people today. God, because You still love us so much. And God, there's nothing in all of our lives that we could ever do that would offend You so greatly that You would not still love us. That You would not still forgive us. That You would not still save us. That You would not still open our eyes to see the eternal things that You have for us, God. And so God, I pray for everyone here today that each person today would know You personally. In Jesus' name. And if you're here today and you don't know God personally, you don't have that relationship that I'm describing with God through Jesus Christ, you can have that today. I'm going to ask you to be bold because life is not for the weak. Life is for the bold. Amen? you got to be bold to take things in life. And a stand of faith always requires some boldness. And I'm going to ask you, if you're here today and you do not walk with God personally and you'd like to see Him, You'd like to have that vision turned on in your life to see Him and to know Him personally. I'm just going to ask you in the next three seconds, lift up your hand so that I can see. Everyone else can close your eyes, bow your heads, just lock in personally with God. If you want to know Him personally today, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to ask you to be bold and lift up your hand. One, two, three. Anyone here today? Thank you, Lord. That's awesome. Thank you, Lord. That's all pray this prayer together because you know what? We're brothers and sisters. We're a family. Amen? And this is something we can do together. So all of us, nice and loud, let's pray this together. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love me. I confess my sin. I ask that you would forgive me. I ask that you would open my eyes, open my spiritual eyes to see things I've never seen before. Come into my heart. Come into my life. And save me. And be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. I enjoyed that this morning. I hope that you got something.